COVID-19 Vaccinations in Long-Term Care, a conversation with the West Virginia Healthcare Association's Pam Metter. Hi, my name is Pam Metter, and I am the Director of Regulatory Services with the West Virginia Healthcare Association. Um, I am an RN, and I've been in long-term care for over 30 years in a various number of positions. I, I worked 10 years in Quality Insights as a project coordinator, and then I moved on to the West Virginia Healthcare Association, where I do a lot of the same things, a lot of consultant work, a lot of um, policy review and survey review, and just helping facilities out with some of their issues that they may have that um, some of my uh, experience can, you know, give them some insight on other ways to, to deal with situations and problems. So that's my long-term care history. Why is it important for nursing home employees to get a COVID-19 vaccine? Because we deal with a population that is, you know, very clinically complex, their immune systems are already depleted, and many of the deaths and many of the extreme illnesses associated with COVID-19 is in long-term care. And when you look at the, when you look at the data and you look at the past for, before we had any vaccinations, and then you look at now, the curve for the COVID-19, um, the COVID-19 infections and deaths has went down dramatically. So, I mean, you can't argue with that kind of science. Uh, the, the vaccinations have been proven to be impactful. They've been proven to help the residents and the staff and families, and not just in long-term care, but in the entire community. The vaccinations have been proven to be safe and impactful and effective. So it's important that long-term care staff really review the information and make an informed decision on getting the vaccination. Uh, it's there to help save lives. I always refer back to um, polio when the polio vaccination was developed and our parents received the polio vaccination unbeknownst to what in the future it would do, it would cause kind of like this one. We don't know, you never know what it's gonna do in the future, but they saved our generation by doing that. So hopefully hopefully, folks are, are able to look at it, realize that it is, it is something that has been scrutinized as any other vaccination has been and the importance of, of protecting our residents and our, our families. Do you think incentives should be offered to those in nursing homes who haven't been vaccinated? Um, I, I think incentives are extremely important, and it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be monetary incentives, and it doesn't have to be pizza parties either. It can be anything that um, encourages those within the facility to realize the importance of becoming vaccinated for their coworkers, for their residents, for their staff, other staff members, that kind of thing. So incentives are extremely important. It could be, you know, there's so many things people and people like, you know, it, being recognized. They like being recognized for the good things that they're doing. They like to be empowered in the decision-making process. There, there should be incentives involved in some way, shape or form. How does misleading or false information on social media impact vaccine hesitancy or vaccine confidence for staff? It's a wonderful way to, to communicate and to get in, you know, get in touch with folks, but it's also a very strong way to communicate misinformation. And I'm not going to, you know, I, there's a couple of things like, for example, um, people are asking have you put a magnet where you got your shot and the magnet sticks? Has anybody gotten that? And if you did, which, which vaccination did you get? We have to find the information that dispels. Why is that not possible? People talk about, for example, how quickly the vaccine was, was developed. And that was one of my big questions, to be honest. As a clinical person, I was a little concerned about how quickly 
it, it was like, oh yeah, here's COVID. Oh yeah, here's the vaccine. Look what we did. And that's not something that's, that's happened in the past. So we need to communicate that kind of information to our staff. Because when they say, no, I don't know, it was awful quick. They, they sure don't know anything about it because they rushed it through. We counter with the research. We counter with, well, here, read this. Um, so it has to be in their terms. It has to be in what's not really layman's terms because, you know, your staff has some clinical knowledge and your clinical expertise, but it does have to be in a way that they understand it and that when they go on to social media and they read some of this stuff, they're able to then counter what they're saying. Well, okay, yeah, but this is what I've heard. Tell me about what you think about this. And a lot of times that sways a person into the, the, onto the track of um, the research instead of the hearsay. How can we explain the science of vaccination processes on a level that staff will understand? I was just talking about talking to folks on their level. It's important to do that with your residents when you're explaining situ- explaining their diagnosis or a, a test or anything, but it's also important to explain the vaccination on the level that this person will understand. And you need to make sure that you're not condescending to them because that's that's you know that's not something that they're going to take. They're going to stop hearing everything you say once you're like, let me break this down a little bit to you because you know. But if you, if you use it as, if you show them the research in their terms, they are going to be able to take that knowledge and apply it to their situations. Um, they're going to be able to take that knowledge and say, okay, they say that this, that the vaccination is, um, is safe for uh, the elderly population. And it's helping reduce the number of of, um, COVID positive cases. And it's helping to reduce the severity of the the variants and the COVID positive variants. But you show them numbers or even better picture graphs that show, okay, this is where we are. This is where we were at the beginning. This is where we're at now at the very, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, I'm going down. Um, you, you can, you, you, if you can show them the decline and show them the numbers, to me, that would be a very impactful way to, to imp, put the research into the education without making them understand X and Y graphs and this, this, you know, mean and, you know, an uh, outlier and all of that stuff. They don't need to know all that stuff. They need to know the basic facts that vaccinations improve the, the quality of life and the quality of care for our residents. And there is a lot, CMS has tons of vaccination graphs out there that's already, it's already being, um, published. And you can also use these graphs and things in your QAPIs uh, to show how you are influencing your staff to take the, um, the vac- to, to agree to take the vaccination. You can use these, these to show that you are not just, you know, giving them the EUAs, the uh, emergency use authorizations and going on down the road. You are really truly using the research and really truly using the science behind the vaccinations, not just saying, yeah, it's the thing we need to do. Do you believe COVID-19 vaccines will become mandatory in the future? Um, I, haven't, I haven't heard anybody say that the vaccinations are gonna be mandatory through legislative measures or through, you know, like government type um, rulings. Um, there are, private businesses and and certain healthcare industries that are mandating the vaccination for their employment within their, um, you know, within their company. And that's, you know, that's their right to do that. They can absolutely uh, mandate it if that's, and if people who don't want it don't want to work for them, that's, you know, that's their business. And that should be as we are, you know, free to make those decisions. Um, uh, it's, it's a very tough thing to make a 
vaccination or any type of medication um, mandatory. So I, I really, in my, and this is my personal opinion, it might happen tomorrow, I don't know, but my personal opinion, no, there, it's, there's not going to be a mandatory legislation for that. Where can people go for reliable information about COVID-19 vaccines? There are so many places to find information about the COVID-19 vaccination, anything COVID-19, really. Um, one of the best places is, of course, the CDC. Uh, if, but you've got to be careful when you Google this stuff, because a lot of times you will Google something and it will be a, uh, an ad and it will take you to a certain site that's not really the CDC or it's not CMS or it's not, you know, it takes you to a separate site that's not research based, based information. So the CDC is fantastic to find information on, especially under the long-term care tabs. Um, your, the quality insights, the QIO, like I told you, I worked for the QIO for 10 years and they have some of the most up-to-date and best information that you got at your fingertips as, um, working with quality insights. You can call one of the project coordinators and they will help you with anything that you need help with. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful tool in your toolbox. Um, you've got to you've you've got to contact them and get and get to know them, and they will help you tremendously find resources, tools. They'll talk with you about and use their expertise on certain situations that you have. So, Quality Insights is a fantastic um, uh, research and and tool for you guys. Another one is our association. We're West Virginia Healthcare Association. Um, we're a, uh, we're, we're based on membership, but um, I'm available to help with questions. I'm available to help with uh, locating certain policies, procedures, things like that. And the West Virginia um, Department of Health and Human Resources has an entire page dedicated to West Virginia regulations and policies and procedures, not just for long-term care, but for uh, the whole healthcare continuum. So if you have a question about dialysis, you can go on WVDHHR in their COVID section and go to the dialysis section and find the information that you're needing. So, you know, CMS is the one that gives us our, our regulatory information. So for example, just like the state, their definition of an outbreak for West Virginia is one positive resident or three positive staff. Well, CMS's definition is one positive resident and one positive staff, new positive. So, you know, even though West Virginia has that, we have to go with CMS since they are our regulatory body. So those little things are the stuff that your experts can help you with and make sure that you're in line with.